All right, guys, so I'm going to run through a really quick video of how I fix my LSR 2310 SP JBL Studio subwoofer. A lot of years of beautiful music, and um, it started having an issue quite a while ago, and I just never got around to fixing it. And what was happening is the left channel or the right channel, either one, would just completely drop, and or I would get some hum in one of the channels, and I would have to then screw around with this crossover switch. I kind of figured out it was this because I could push on it, push in and out on it. I could get it to work sometimes, flip it back and forth a bunch of times I get it to work, but it was all in the switch. So I finally got around to tearing it down and fixing it. By the way, this was a wild amplifier design. The heat sink for the amplifier is actually in the port. So as a base chuffs, and it cools the, it cools the amplifier section. This design didn't live, I don't think too, too long, but super, super cool. And again, this thing has been rock solid reliable other than this one dang little issue. So I'm gonna show you how to take this thing apart really quick. All the screws gotta come off of this. Do keep track of your screws. Like all of these up here are plastite type screws. You do have some machine screws for right here on this little voltage switch. And the rest are kind of machine screws as well for the whole thing besides the outside are just wood screws that go into the unit itself. So, um, Took everything off. You do have to pull the volume knob off. There is a nut on this potentiometer. You do have to take off these two phono jack nuts. And let me grab a chair and sit down so we can kind of go through this. But I put it all back together, tested it. It works beautifully, but then I had to take it apart because I'm like, you know what? Somebody out there is going to need this video. And I'd rather help you guys out because I hate throwing stuff away. So let's take this nut off. Hopefully it doesn't all fall. Yep, kind of did. Fell out the back. So it's the only thing holding it. All right, now let me flip it over. You'll see what you got to do here. All right. So amplifier board, just a power input section on this. And then this holds the daughter card, this bucket thing for the switch mechanism. So what you have to do, there's going to be five um, plastic type screws, plastite type screws on here that hold the board in. You do have to take out the two screws for these chips. You are going to need thermal grease because my thermal grease was pretty crusty. Um, I don't know how I ran out, but I did. So I've got some coming in today on Amazon. But take those screws out. Be very mindful of this particular chip because if you use a standard screwdriver, there's a power fuse linked right to this capacitor right there. And if you use a standard screwdriver, boom, sparks. Ask me how I know. Um, but use an insulated screwdriver or wrap electrical tape around it, whatever, to get to this um, or just discharge the capacitors. And so once you get all these screws out, then this board is actually will lift out. You can see here, we just have little a little pin header. That's how you get to it. Now to get this section out and off, you do have to desolder the two power switch pins because the power switch is actually pressed through this chassis and locks into place. And if you don't desolder this, this will not come out. So you do have to desolder here and then take off your ground screw. And then this will come out. You can see right here. Inside here, we have our daughter card. I know some of you guys are twitching. I don't have a ground strap on. I'm kind of twitching too. But anyways, there is that little switch, LT, right in the dead center. And uh, it's kind of a pain to desolder, so you got to have some uh, good soldering skills. Actually, not too much of a pain. It was just, they're kind of fine pitch, and uh, it just takes a little bit to get them free. And once you do, once you get it free, you got to take the switch out. And I didn't video the switch repair, so we're going we're gonna to move over to photos of what I had to do, the internals of the switch, to bring it back to life. And all it really is is inside that switch, there's two, two sets of tracks and there's four little carriages and they're all silver and or silver plated. And they were all very, very, very tarnished. So we had to clean those up and that fixed all of my issues. So let's take a look at those photos. So for here, all you have to do is bend these little tabs outwards and then you can lift the guts of the switch out. Here you can see the four little contacts and then the switch internals themselves with the contact tracks. This is our problem here. If you take a look at the tracks, you can see how black and tarnished that silver has become. It is really, really nasty. To get that tarnish off, we broke out some good silver cleaner, some Tarnex. 
and we wiped it down, scrubbed it a little bit for about 30 seconds or so, and then rinsed in distilled water. And I mean, you really have to rinse well to get all the residue off. I cleaned both the tracks and the little carriage contact riders. And just like that, all the silver tarnish is gone and the contacts are looking really nice. As a last step, I used a little bit of silicone dielectric grease on the tracks and on the carriages themselves. This will prevent that tarnish from coming back and won't cause an improper electrical connection. Dielectric grease itself is not conductive and in used in a small amount and in the right way, it's not gonna cause any problems at all and it's just gonna help with the longevity of this switch. And that's it guys, I promised you a really short video and a really short repair and that's all you got to do to get this little sub up and running again and this is an absolutely fantastic sub and I highly highly recommend it. You can get it on the used market pretty cheap, likely because of this problem. It's a very very common problem, I've actually seen it in other places around the net and most people just end up discarding these subs. Not a cool thing when you can fix it pretty easy. I hope this helps you, I will catch you later.